people. Welcome to a new episode of Psicoactivo. Uh, I want to thank you all for the comments and the likes. You're allowed to roast me uh, because I made a mistake. It's a blooper that I have at the very beginning of my last video where I meant to say Chris Bledsoe, but I said Drew Bledsoe, <laughs> who is a former quarterback. The thing is that I write about the NFL all the time in my day job and I got I get them mixed up sometimes I'm sorry but in today's video I want to talk about a new paper that it goes by the name the crypto terrestrial hypothesis a case for scientific openness to a concealed earthly explanation for unidentified anomalous phenomena this paper was written by Harvard University's Tim Lomas, Harvard University's Brendan Case, and a well-known uh, scientist from the UFO community, Dr. Michael Masters, who famously wrote the uh, books Identified Flying Objects and the Extratempestral Model, which talks about future human hypotheses. It's actually one of the most interesting books I've read on the topic because Dr. Master has a uh, Dr. Master ha because Dr. Masters has an approach as an anthropologist and he makes a lot of sense with morphology and the lost time um, aspect of the abduction phenomenon and uh, all types of uh, close encounters that he's documented on the extratempestrial model book that alludes to these objects potentially being um, time machines. But this new uh, paper, it really doesn't touch on that. And I'm very happy that Dr. Dr. Michael Masters has um, uh, contributed to this paper because it talks about a number of potential hypotheses that need to be looked at. So let's take a look at this breakdown uh, it says a Harvard study suggests aliens might be living among us underground or in a base inside the moon the researchers propose that UFOs could even be visiting alien friends on earth we entertain them here because some aspects of UAP are strange enough that they seem to call for unconventional explanations Let's go to theory number one, human cryptoterrestrials. This theory suggests that an ancient human civilization, highly advanced but mostly destroyed long ago, possibly by a flood, continues to exist in hidden form. These humans live underground, away from modern society, using advanced technology to remain undetected. This is a very interesting one because it basically alludes to the younger uh, younger Dryas theory, which is a hypothesis that many asteroids hit Earth around between 10,000 and 512,000 years ago, and it created one of the biggest floods in human history, or in the the Earth's history, and that a portion of these civilizations that were destroyed by these floods uh, remain alive to this day. That's very interesting. The theory number two is the hominid or theropod cryptoterrestrials, a non-human civilization of terrestrial animals like ape-like hominids or intelligent dinosaurs evolved to live in stealth. These beings could inhabit subterranean environments using sophisticated means to avoid detection by humans on the surface. So this one's a scary one because uh, it basically alludes to uh, either reptilians or some kind of hominid that is already bigger and evolved past the current hominids that we have on Earth, which kind of links to a Bigfoot hypothesis. So they wanted to cover that aspect too. Again, these are just hypotheses. Don't think that this is true or anything. It's just like the natural way in which things are progressing. Like 10 years ago, we didn't have this. It was impossible. 
people like Dr. Masters or other scientists who are doing uh, works on this, they wouldn't have the same kind of courage to study this in public and release a paper like this. So I want you guys to understand how important this is because more papers are going to keep coming. And it's really refreshing that they can now openly discuss these topics and talk about them in scientific uh, sets. So I need for people to understand how important this is and to feel happy because it's, it's a step forward, whether you like it or not. We're finally getting to talk about this scientifically. That's what we wanted. There's still a lot to do, but it's very encouraging. So let's continue, okay? Theory three is former extraterrestrial or extratemporal cryptoterrestrials. This touches a little bit on Dr. Master's uh, extratemporal model because uh, it's extratemporal. Um, this theory posits that these beings came from another part of the cosmos or from the human future and have concealed themselves possibly on the moon they interact with earth covertly explaining some ufo sightings some this is one that i really really like i am so glad that they included it it's the theory number four and there's a book that you guys need to look up from author patrick harper who is an English author, who has a book called The Daimonic Reality. Please look it up. Read that explanation that he has of what UFOs might be is directly tied to this theory number four of magical crypto-terrestrials because Harper attempted to explain all phenomena in his book. This included... Uh, gnomes, fairies, elves, nymphs, any kind of uh, cryptid or beast uh, who appears to be mythological. That's what Patrick Harper did. It's one of the most important books on the topic that often goes unnoticed because it talks a lot uh, about a lot of woo, about a lot of uh, cryptids. But I think it's very um, important to at least have it as one of the base uh, sources of information for a lot of this. So please go look it up. It's really good. So let's go to theory number four. Magical crypto-terrestrials, less like aliens and more like earthbound angels, these entities interact with the world in ways that are more magical than technological. They resemble mythical beings such as fairies, elves, or nymphs blending seamlessly into folklore and legends. We can also go to a wide variety of other examples, right? Like, for example, Chris Bledsoe's The Lady. That could be categorized as one of these. Um, the famous Nagas, which is a part of the um, Middle Eastern cu culture uh, lore, of mythological beasts that were very similar to uh, serpents. Uh, we can also go to the jinn, the famous jinn, which is a kind of or type of demon that uh, the Muslims have and as part of their lore. We can also also go to uh, Tucker Carlson's uh, demonic or angelic beings that he talks about. It's a lot, but I'm not saying they're real. What I'm saying is that these scientists took the time to study the many traditions throughout history that have been talking about these phenomena according to their times and their own perspectives of what they think uh, some of these things are. And I love it that they're attempting to do it in a scientific fashion rather than some hit piece or some... Um, vitriolic kind of um, op-ed against any topic, uh, I think that we need to come to terms with the fact that many of the cultures before us took a lot of this stuff seriously. And there's a reason for that. So we need to study why they took it seriously. 
We need to see if there are some things or aspects of these phenomena that we may have missed because we are currently living in this materialistic paradigm that we're unable to get out of at the moment, but it is not impossible to. We have the capacity, I repeat, we have the capacity to hone many skills that we have that our ancestors had more in tune in order to properly understand our reality around us. Right now, a lot of our perception of what the real world is, or we think it is, is conditioned by this materialistic paradigm. And the sooner we realize that there's more to life and reality than meets these eyes, because these eyes can only look in a limited spectrum. We can only see the 3D. There are many aspects of reality that these eyes cannot see. But we have other ways of seeing things. And that's part of the traditions. That's what I told Mr. Astral from Twitter, who uh, also works with uh, Ross Coulter and Bryce Sable. He, he was talking about making a space that was nearly six hours long, where he talked about the different types of disclosure. And one of these parts is uh, the personal disclosure, right? And I wanted to add like a paragraph inside that part that is a personal disclosure that has to do with finding knowledge about these traditions and older civilizations that uh, they regarded reality as something entirely different than us because they were more accustomed and used to uh, many of these traditions that were also very quite bound with nature, you know, and with the use of uh, psychedelic plants and with uh, other types of rituals that they performed before dogmatic religion took over the entire planet, which is the Abrahamic religions. Let's be real. That's what happened. And I think that a lot of this disclosure process has to do with uh, many of us coming to terms with uh, our ancient uh, relatives were more used to these traditions than we are today. And the more we look into books and uh, um, old philosophy, old physics, many aspects of this, uh, the more informed we're going to be into what this can be right um and that's i think i have a hunch that that's one of the ways in which we're going to understand this phenomenon better because uh many of these traditions and uh, the psychedelic substances that were banned they have been stigmatized for many decades and i would even say millennia by these uh organized or organized religions and there's a reason they've been stigmatized exactly in the same way as the UFO topic has been stigmatized. It takes the control away from um, the powers that be and the people that are actually controlling everything right now. And that's what they want to avoid. But, man, the sooner we get to uh, how understanding how wide the world is and how much the Internet has taking the power from all of these people, the faster we're going to get to the truth. That's that's just my idea of it. So let me know what you think about this new uh, proposed crypto terrestrial hypothesis. I'm going to leave the whole paper in the uh, description below. But please let me know. What do you think about it? Do you think... Uh, any of these hypotheses and theories are plausible. Why? Uh, if not, please tell me why too. If you find any value on this video, I would ask you to please subscribe, like, comment, share if you must, and all platforms that you can. Uh, that helps the channel keep growing and uh, it keeps me doing this, which I really love. Uh, thank you for everything and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.